Guys, DeFi is taking off like a rocket. The total value in DeFi protocols has gone up over 10x in the last year alone, and it's peaked up at around $10 billion. I'm seeing an explosion of new apps in the DeFi space on a weekly basis, and frankly, it's hard for me to keep up with everything. All signs point towards a big upward trend, and I think this whole DeFi space is going to be huge. So in this video, I'm going to tell you why I think that as a blockchain developer who works with the Ethereum protocol on a daily basis, because Ethereum is at the epicenter of all the activity that's happening happening in DeFi right now. I'm going to talk about why DeFi is such a big deal, where I think this space is headed, and whether DeFi is in a bubble or not. All right. So before we get into that, if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory. And on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash the like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to learn how to master blockchain step by step from start to finish and build a real world DeFi app, then head on over to adaptuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. So what is DeFi? Well, basically, it's decentralized finance or, you know, DeFi for short. This is basically taking traditional financial applications and moving them over to the blockchain. Things like savings, lending, derivatives, trading, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, okay. And you can see that, you know, the total value locked in DeFi peaked up close to $10 billion here about a week ago. And I think it's actually still close to this number because uh, some of the new projects aren't actually counted in this list just yet. So some people don't like the term decentralized finance because they don't think, you know, it's totally decentralized. That's okay. Some people like to call it open finance. I think that's a fine description as well. So even if it's not completely decentralized, you know, what are the benefits of DeFi? Why would you use it over the, tradi the traditional financial system in the first place? Well, there's lots of reasons. And the main ones I can think of are automation, you know, trans transparency, and speed. Even if it's not decentralized, these are still benefits that you get for using it. So let me explain what I mean by that. So basically, you know, automation improves the efficiency of the process. Basically, you can make computers do things that humans were doing in the legacy financial system and actually making it more profitable for the people who implement these solutions and also the end user. So it's a win-win. So transparency. So this is where basically you can verify all the history of everything that's ever happened inside a DeFi protocol. So, you know, if, if they ever did something nefarious, you know exactly who to blame. And you can also verify that uh, the system is going to work exactly how you expect it to before you use it. And then lastly, speed. So DeFi offers a huge competitive edge in settlement. So time is money in business. And if you can have a faster settlement layer in the financial system, then DeFi offers a huge competitive edge for that. So now I'm going to go through some concrete examples of these uh, so you can see how DeFi you know, adds value to these financial use cases. And I want to talk about these in terms of like consumer adoption versus business adoption. And I think one thing that trips up a lot of people and not seeing like what a big deal DeFi is, is they constantly concentrate too much on consumer adoption and not enough on business adoption. And a lot of people don't have a strong like understanding of how the traditional financial system works and why DeFi can offer a huge improvement to it. And that's okay. Like I didn't have a strong finance background whenever I first got into blockchain. I learned a lot of this stuff as I went along. But I do think that DeFi offers clear use cases in each of these categories. And I want to go over some of those now. So let's start off with consumer adoption because I think there's one particular use case that's prime for consumer adoption. Okay. And that's a uh, competitive savings rate or high yield savings rates. So, so what do I mean by that? Well, basically like on my checking account, on my savings account, I have very low interest rate, like maybe like 0.01% or something like that. I don't even keep track anymore because it's so abysmally low. But uh, with DeFi apps, you can offer a much higher yield savings rate uh, on stable coins, for example. So this is Compound Finance. It's a decentralized finance app. It's a money market that basically automates away your bank, all right, because you can deposit uh, cryptocurrency in here, stable coins, right, like whose price don't change. And then uh, people can borrow that money on the other side. It's basically what your bank does. You know, you deposit money and then they lend it out. You know, they charge interest on the loans um, and then you you earn, you know, interest for doing that. And so this is a clear use case for consumers because it's really easy to understand. Basically, you just take your money, you move it somewhere else, and it earns you more money with very little effort, okay? So I think it, I think it's huge. A lot of people can get on board with this. Um, so you might be thinking like, whoa, 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 whoa. There's still so much to this, right? Like there's smart contract risk. There's no way that like regular users are going to install MetaMask in their browser and go to like some blockchain website in order to do this. And you're you're right, but there are solutions to this. Okay, so when you talk about the, the risk uh, of like maybe the smart contract getting hacked, you know, usually funds getting lost. Well, you could insure these funds, okay, through some third-party service, and sure that might eat into the interest rate a little bit, but you still might have a higher interest rate than you would in your savings account. So that's one way to solve that problem, okay. 
And, uh, you know, when you're talking about consumers not using MetaMask, not going to use dApps, well, there's two different solutions to that, okay? The first one are mobile wallets. So people are already u- used to installing new apps on their phone, right? Not necessarily installing new browser extensions to use a new internet, right? So there are really great wallets that support DeFi out of the box, like Dharma, as an example, uh, or Argent. And I've done some videos about these on my channel. You can check that out if you want to. But basically, like... If especially younger users, more like millennial users and, you know, whatever the generation behind millennials are, whatever you call them these days. And if they have, you know, Apple Pay already installed in their phone or Android Pay with a few clicks of a button, they can basically transfer money from their debit card into the app and start earning interest that way. And they can just interact with these uh, DeFi protocols natively inside these Ethereum wallets. Okay, so I think this mobile first uh, approach is going to attract a lot of new users into the blockchain and DeFi space. And so in addition to mobile, I think there's another really... um, compelling way that we can get more people on board. And that's through, honestly, like centralized exchanges like Coinbase, for example. I think we're going to start seeing a lot of these websites become more like cryptocurrency banks, okay? Because let's be honest, like a lot of people don't want to custody uh, cryptocurrency assets. They want somebody else to do it for them. And I think it's a fine use case for like mainstream users to use a website like Coinbase or somebody else in order to do this. I probably take a lot of flack from like the hardcore decentralized people for saying that, but I think it's just realistic. And I think a lot of these uh, centralized exchanges can become like crypto banks where they plug into DeFi protocols in the back end and let users, you know, store uh, funds and earn interest that way. So somebody wants to, you know, take advantage of a high yield savings account, they might be able to use Coinbase or a similar website that plugs into Compound on the back end, right, in order to generate those high yields. And that's one way that I think we can see consumer adoption of this new technology, okay? So let's talk about business adoption because I think this was probably going to happen, honestly, faster than consumer adoption. I mean, it already is. And so one of the biggest ways that I think that we'll see adoption in this area is just with, you know, finance and tools for traders, uh, investment funds, and things like that. So Synthetix was a pretty good example of an early project in this arena, basically building a protocol for derivatives trading. I think uh, derivatives are going to be a huge deal. You're talking about synthetic assets, you know, options, contracts, futures, indices, uh, all that kind of stuff. There's huge benefits to these protocols because for, for lots of reasons, there's less friction to get involved. So as long as you have funds, like you don't have to KYC, you don't have to get improved for like a margin account or anything like that. There's faster settlement and there's also the added benefit of transparency. And we're starting to see lots of projects get built in this space that do the same kind of things that are possible in the traditional financial system. We've got specific protocols for perpetual contracts, you know, options trading and futures with all these tools like, you know, 20x leverage that traders love. And we're seeing an explosion of projects to solve these kinds of problems. And that's a really great sign because it means there's competition here. There's demand uh, to build these types of tools that traders, you know, use in the traditional financial system. And another big use case for business is honestly just stable coins. Okay, so that certainly has consumer, uh, you know, adoption potential as well. But stable coins provide a huge benefit to businesses because basically you can transfer large amounts of money with like no slippage and very little fees really fast. And you can verify that it happened. There's that transparency. Okay. So like, you know, if you want to do a wire transfer, uh, you might have to go into a bank to do it manually or have to wait a few days, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and charge a fee on top of that. But with stable coins, I mean, you can basically just like, You even have to have an Ethereum wallet. You could log into your Coinbase account and send USDC to somebody else's Coinbase account uh, and it will settle really fast and the funds will basically appear within minutes, okay? And outside of that, you know, if you are able to cut custody funds, you know how to use a wallet, then you can, uh, you know, transfer funds between those wallets really quickly too. And one reason I think that the user experience of blockchain technology is just fine for now for business use cases is because it's really common to train people to use really specific tools in a business environment. So there's like nothing stopping you from like teaching people how to use MetaMask inside your business if it improves your business efficiency. And I think stable coins in the Ethereum network honestly pose a bit of a threat to something like Swift, for example. So, you know, Swift is the... Uh, you know, sort of the old financial rails that we use a lot of times for electronic funds transfers. And the benefits that I just talked about give Ethereum and stable coins a pretty competitive edge over SWIFT, honestly. I mean, like I said, time is money. And if you can move money around faster, then why wouldn't people do it that way? And so there's lots of other ways that I think that uh, DeFi can see adoption in the business sector and also just with consumer finance, right? And I have time to cover them all in this video. These are just a few prime ways, okay? You know, we've got things like lending, for example. Uh, of course, a lot of the loans that happen right now on uh, in DeFi 
um, are over collateralized loans, which means you have to you know put more money into the protocols than you borrow. Uh, so this that doesn't necessarily make it ready. That's more appealing to traders and people who are doing yield farming and liquidity mining. Okay, but we're already seeing people work towards solutions for under collateralized loans, and I think when we get there, it's just a matter of time before this thing just blows up like crazy. So is DeFi in a bubble? Well, I think so. But here's the thing. You want it to be in a bubble. That attracts so much attention. And just because it's in a bubble doesn't mean it's too dangerous for you to learn the technology. Sure, there's a lot of financial speculation around it. And I'm not necessarily saying you need to buy DeFi tokens. But I am saying that the demand for the tech is not going away anytime soon. So I think about this like a Pandora's box situation. Basically, like Pandora has been let out of the box and there's no stuffing it back in. That's what DeFi is like. That's what blockchain technology is like in general. You know, trust me. I was here at the end of 2017, whenever the ICO bubble popped, you know, the cryptocurrency prices tanked, and we entered in a two-year bear market, okay? So, you know, during that two-year bear market, that's when I built up my YouTube channel. And, you know, you might think I was crazy for doing that, but that's because, like, I saw that blockchain was like this. It was like this Pandora's box situation. It wasn't going away, even if all the speculative hype had like gone away, okay? And during that time, I knew that the demand for blockchain was high. It continued to stay high. We built all these DeFi solutions during this bear market. A lot of people got hired to be blockchain developers, and that's how this stuff became a reality. And so DeFi is a lot like that. Now, I'm not saying it's in as, as big of a speculative bubble as you know the ICO bubble was, at least not at this point in time. It might get to be that way. But right now, I think it's a really great time to jump on this stuff and learn it while it's still early. All right. So those are my thoughts on why I think DeFi is going to be huge, where this space is headed, all that kind of stuff. Okay. So right now is the perfect time to double down. So I hope you like this video. Be sure to smash the like button down below. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And yeah, right now is the perfect time to jump on this trend while it's still early. So if you want to do that, how can you get started today? Well, there are a few ways. You know, you can head over to my YouTube homepage and find any of my uh, free courses there. They're just like Udemy courses, but they're totally free for you here on YouTube. And if you want to, you know, take the next step or hey, maybe you want to take a master shortcut entirely, then I can show you how to master blockchain step by step from start to finish, you know, build a real world DeFi app so that you can, you know, land a high paying job, become a freelancer, you know, build your own project. Just head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. All right. So that's all I've got. And until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.